Next, what makes up the extracellular matrix of connective tissue? Well, it's a combination of a gel-like matrix there that's associated with proteoglycans and glycoproteins and a fibrillar makeup that consists of collagen mainly, but also elastin and fibrillin and fibronectin. Collagen is a structural protein that consists of a triple helix of amino acid change, each, the, each containing a repeating tripeptide. Collagen precursors are synthesized within the rough endoplasmic reticulum inside a fibroblast, typically, or a myofibroblast. And after initial synthesis by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus undergoes a process of hydroxylation that's uh, in the presence of a required element of vitamin C, and glycosylation. Finally, a triple helix is formed after modification in the Golgi apparatus. And on the next slide, what is actually secreted is a pro-collagen molecule. The ends of that pro-collagen molecule are then cleaved, removing the propeptides, forming tropocollagen. And then tropocollagen is assembled into collagen fibrils that are stabilized by lysyl oxidase. Collagen comes in a number of different forms or types, and to date there are probably more than 20 collagen types, but there are typically four main types of collagen that characterize most tissues in the body. The most prevalent collagen is known as type 1 collagen. It's found basically in the underlying dermis associated with the skin. It's in tendons, ligaments, bone, and in the cornea. Type 2 collagen is classically found in different types of cartilage, intervertebral discs, and in the vitreous body of the eye. Type 3 collagen consists of or forms reticular fibers that stain uniquely with PAS and silver salts. These are found in blood vessels and form the stroma network, basically in various immune organs, glandular organs, and certain other tissues. And finally, Type 4 collagen is found in all basal laminae, which are components of the basement membrane. Collagen fibers, as shown in this electron micrograph, have a distinct banding pattern with repeating units of 64 nanometers in length. Clinical correlates, many connective tissue-based diseases affect the formation or location of collagen. Scurvy is basically the result of reduced hydroxylation due to a vitamin C deficiency. Patients present with skin hemorrhages, loose teeth, bleeding gums, and poor wound healing, as well as poor bone development. Osteogenesis imperfecta is, again, a type 1 collagen-associated gene mutation. And again, what is seen in these individuals are tremendous skeletal deformity fractures, One of the classic presenting signs of osteogenesis imperfecta is a blue sclera because the connective tissue is thin in the sclera, revealing the underlying blood vessels, and hearing loss. And then finally, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is caused by hydroxylase gene mutations, and these mutations prevent the conversion of procollagen to tropocollagen outside the fibroblast. These patients present with hyperextensible and fragile skin, hypermobility of their joints, varicose veins, and ecchymoses. Next, the other two players that make up the fibrillar component of a connective tissue are elastic fibers and reticular fibers. Elastic fibers are a combination of elastin and fibrillin. These two types of fibrillar proteins are produced like collagen from the connective tissue supporting cells, mainly fibroblasts and fibrocytes. They form fibers that provide a tremendous elasticity or resilience to tissues, meaning that that tissue will will return to their resting length after stretch. Elastic fibers are particularly prominent in the underlying dermis of the skin, the walls of blood vessels, especially arteries, and in the alveoli and uh, bronchioles of the lung. Reticular fibers contain type 3 collagens, as we pointed out. They have special staining characteristics and they form the capsules and stroma of immune tissues, bone marrow, and are found in the capsule of the liver. Marfan syndrome, elastic tissue is significantly weakened, and this presents with significant ocular deficits, including a detached lens, myopia. Skeletal deficits are the classic signs of this uh, syndrome, including elongate arms, legs, fingers, and, uh, and scoliosis. 
Cardiovascular deficits, which are probably the most clinically significant features of Marfan syndrome, include mitral valve pro- prolapse uh, and a dilated or- aorta. Cause of Marfan syndrome is a defect or a fibrillin gene mutation that occurs on chromosome 15. In addition to fibrillar proteins, the extracellular matrix also consists of fibronectin, proteoglycans, and glycosaminoglycans. Fibronectin is comprised of insoluble monomers that are secreted by the same connective tissue cells. Fibronectin binds to collagen and other matrix components, as well as to cell surface receptors, and is important in in the interaction of cells with the matrix. Proteoglycans consist mainly of long, unbranched glycosaminoglycans that are linked to a protein core. GAGs are highly negative charged due to many sulfated residues, and they attract positively charged cations around them. Proteoglycans tend to form aggregates by being linked to a hyaluronin molecule by a linker protein. And then glycoproteins have a much greater content of protein compared with proteoglycans. Laminin and tactin and tenacin are non-filamentous structural glycoproteins that are found throughout the extracellular matrix. Laminin is an important component of the basement membrane of most epithelial and endothelial cells, and their presence is important because laminin binds integrins of the cell membrane and links the cell to the underlying basal lamina via intactin, which links the laminin to the type 4 collagen that's prevalent in that basal lamina. Collagen depending on its array and distribution, forms the major structural entity of connective tissue. So in loose, irregular connective tissue, there tend to be more cells than there are fibrillar protein components. Loose, irregular connective tissue is typically found in the submucosa of many organs, forming the lamina propria, and is in the papillary dermis beneath the skin. Dense, regular connective tissue is highly organized, and may be organized into larger parallel bundles. Classic location of finding dense, irregular connective tissue is in tendons or in other orderly arrangements such as bone and in the cornea. Dense, irregular connective tissue has more fibers and relatively few cells, is again found in the underlying dermis and in the capsules of various organs. Now, finally, a comparison. We looked at this slide earlier but it's relevant to bring it up again just to make the comparison between the different forms of connective tissue. This is loose, irregular connective tissue that contains a wide array of irregular collagen and elastic fibers. And obviously you see some examples again of some of the permanent guests, including mast cells with their distinct granular cytoplasm and macrophages. Compare this with dense, irregular connective tissue in the underlying dermis. And here you can see many more fibers compared to cells, and you'll note that the pinkish staining or eosinophilic larger fibers are collagen, and the smaller darkly staining fibers are those of elastic fibers. And then finally, here is dense regular connective tissue, and it makes a nice comparison between it, which is shown on the lower right corner, lower left corner of the slide, with skeletal muscle. And certainly, skeletal muscle is going to blend with dense regular connective tissue at a myotendinous junction. And you can see that the elongate skeletal muscle cells are similar in a way to the elongate fibrocytes that are characteristic of dense regular connective tissue. But certainly, it's easy to distinguish the striations associated with the myofibrils and the sarcomeres in skeletal muscle versus the relatively clear elements that make up the collagen of dense regular connective tissue. Finally, here's an electron micrograph of probably the best known, most clinically significant basal lamina in the body. This is the basal lamina of the kidney glomerulus. And what we're looking at basically are, is a shared basal lamina, which is a subset of what light microscopists call the basement membrane. And note that this shared basal lamina is in close contact with a fenestrated endothelial layer, and on the other side of the shared basal lamina are the foot-like processes of a podocyte, and the podocyte cell is basically shown in the upper right corner of the slide. But the point of this is the basal lamina has a specific meshwork-like array of type 4 collagen, and it consists of a negatively charged heparin sulfate proteoglycan and 
large amounts of laminin that are linking the cells that make up the uh, elements on either side of the basal lamina to the type 4 collagen in the basal lamina.